So we're mid-October now. Uh, I've, I've had a, a couple of good hunts already. Uh, killed a nice buck here in Utah with my muzzleloader and also went to New Mexico with Lorenzo and had a great archery elk hunt down there. Uh, we're kind of mid-season. I'm moving towards the, the tail end of my year and I have a couple of hunts left. Um, one of the big ones that I have left is a hunt that I look forward to this year. Uh, it's a hunt that I went on last year and I'm really excited about it again this year and it's a, a Kodiak Sitka Blacktail hunt. So my gear list, uh, my gear items that I have for Kodiak uh, are a little bit similar to some of the other hunts that I've been on this year, uh, but there's definitely some items that I'm going to key in on that guys that are headed uh, north to Alaska uh, or any late season hunt are, are going to want to have. Um, if you've never been to Alaska, a Sitka Blacktail hunt is a great opportunity to kind of get your feet wet. It's a very fun hunt, uh, a lot of deer, um, also quite a few bears, so that's something I'll, I'll touch on. But it's a great first hunt. Uh, it's a little bit different, it's not a backpack hunt. Uh, we're actually going to use a transporter, so what we'll do is we'll fly from Las Vegas to Seattle, and Seattle to Anchorage, and then Anchorage up to Kodiak, and then we'll finally take a smaller plane up to uh, a little bay, and then from there we'll meet our transporter, and a transporter is basically going to take us out uh, on a boat. We're gonna live on the boat. Uh, and then every day when we wanna go hunting, uh, they'll take us in on a, a small rubber raft into the shore and we'll hunt for the day and come back out and we'll end up staying on the boat. Uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, tent type items um, and, and you don't have to worry about food, which is nice also. It's a, a pretty economical uh, hunt and uh, I'll put together an article on how you can possibly do that on your own if you want to. It's a great starter, like I said, if you're, you're interested in going to Alaska. Uh, so I'm just going to jump in and kind of start with uh, my items. I'm going to work the table from this side, kind of my backpack, the stuff that goes in my backpack, uh, all the way to my clothing system for this type of hunt. So I'll just jump in. Um, first, first off, I'll start with my backpack. Uh, this is my Stone Glacier X-Curve frame. Uh, and uh, 5900 Sky 5900 backpack. Uh, got a lot of room. It's a little bit uh, beefy maybe for a day hunt type of pack. The nice thing about this pack though is that it sucks in extremely well. You can pull that against the frame. You've got plenty of room. Um, the thing I do like about this pack is it has the built-in uh, load shelf. You're going to end up uh, hauling deer uh, off your off you know Kodiak um, off the island there down to the beach to meet your transporter every day when you harvest a deer. Uh, I've got two deer tags. You can buy up to three deer tags if you want. Uh, I just I just got two because I'm hunting with a bow and uh, I figured two is a, a pretty tall order. If I can put uh, boned out uh, meat in game bags and slide that in uh, on the load shelf and out I go. This has been a great pack. Uh, I've already packed out a couple of elk and a mule deer this year in this pack. It's performed extremely well. Uh, carries very well. Uh, I'll jump over to my a uh, few other items that go in my backpack uh kodiak you always have to have a rain cover i mean staying dry is the key uh this is a pack cover by mystery ranch basically it's a storage pouch that you know expands out into a pack cover the thing i like about this one is it has a nice little clip that goes around the back of your backpack so the other thing that i would add to your list uh, when you're going to alaska is a set of like two or three thick plastic contractor garbage bags uh, you want to be able to take your game bags and your meat and put those inside those garbage bags when you pack them out You want to Absolutely reduce or eliminate any blood on your pack if you can do so um, And you would do that obviously because of the threat of, of bears um, They can pick up that blood great noses So you want to keep your pack as clean as you can as I stated everything is wet in Kodiak It seems like it's always raining uh, you're always dealing with wet conditions, so everything that goes into your pack needs to go into a dry sack. Um, this one here is the Sea of Summit uh, Ultra Sealed View dry sack. It's handy because you have this uh, TPU clear window that you can see the items in this uh, dry sack. This is the 2 liter uh, version. Um, we also sell you know, 4, 8, 13, and, and even a 20 liter version. Primarily the way you're going to find deer there on Kodiak is through glassing. Uh, this is a Siri U 1204XL tripod with a E10 ball head. Uh, total weight on this setup is about 2 pounds 6 ounces. Uh, it's a great lightweight tripod, really robust. It's going to be able to support my spotting scope uh, easily as well as my 15 by 56s um, So that's my tripod setup. 
for glassing from a tripod, uh, I use the uh, Leica Stable Light base plate. That's 4.8 ounces. It adapts to either 15 by 56 or my 10 by 42s that I wear around my neck. Uh, I always have that with me in my pack. It's uh, easy to use. It's also nice and handy uh, if you're once you harvest a deer and you're on your own. Say, you know, we wouldn't be on our own in Kodiak, but uh, you know, if you were on your own, you can mount your camera and use this elastic piece up and over to to hold your camera and take some self photos. I've done that before. Uh, so that's my uh, my tripod setup. Uh, as far as binoculars, uh, I will take with me a pair of Swarovski 15 by 56 binoculars, um, the SLCs. It's a little bit heavy, but uh, I love the, the advantage this gives me. I can see a lot of country, um, great for finding deer. Uh, I'll also carry the Go Hunt Bino Bandit. Uh, the Bino Bandit has been a cool little thing, one of my favorite things in the gear shop that we have. Blocks out all the light from, from the exterior of the part of your eyes and you can actually just, that gives you tunnel vision. So I love this little Bino Bandit. So that's my, my binocular setup. Uh, I'll also carry around my neck. Um, a pair of Leica UltraVid 10x42 binoculars, which I've had for a lot of years. My chest harness here, my binocular harness, this is a Outdoor Vision uh, Ridgetop Bino Harness with the uh, Sightline um, range, range Finder pouch on the side. Uh, as far as a range finder goes, uh, I run a Leica Rangemaster 1000. Uh, they don't make them at 1000 anymore, they make a 1600 and a 2000, but it's been a great rangefinder for me, uh, very accurate reading. Um, it fits perfectly in this outdoor vision uh, sight line. This is a Swarovski uh, 20 by 60 by 65 spotting scope, angled eyepiece. Uh, this is a, something that I've personally done. I just take a wool sock, cut the ends off of it, and uh, have used that for a scope cover. It's kind of handy just because it keeps my, my lens caps on. And then once I need to, to use it, I can just simply fold it down and, and mount my scope and use it. Uh, and if you want to kind of focus on taking a mature big buck, uh, a spotting scope's handy to have. So I'll jump into uh, my sidearm first off. This is a Glock 40. Uh, brown bears are a concern in Kodiak. <laughs> uh, I saw 13 last year in five days. Luckily, I did not have any encounters with them. Um, everybody in, in Kodiak that you meet has a bear story. So as a form of personal protection, uh, I carry a sidearm. I also carry bear spray. So this is a can of counter assault bear spray. This will go on my chest harness. Um, I'll go the bear, for the bear spray first. And if that doesn't work, we'll go to the sidearm. But I feel like having both, especially where I'm, I'm hunting with a bow and arrow, uh, is a, just a, a precaution that I like to have. So. I carry both sidearm and bear spray. Uh, within this, you're going to have uh, my Delorme inReach. This is the SE model. Uh, this is an older model, but basically this is my satellite communicator. has an SOS button in case I get into a bad spot uh, and need some help. But this is uh, what's going to give me the opportunity to keep in touch both with my boat uh, and, and also my family at home, my wife and kids. Um, so I always have that. Other items in this dry sack, uh, headlamps. So this is a Black Diamond Spot headlamp, uh, 3.1 ounces, runs on three AAA batteries. It's got a battery life of about 30 hours on high beam. Um, we hiked out in the dark last year a fair number of times, so a good headlamp is a must, as well as a fresh pair of batteries. Uh, normally I don't carry a backup headlamp. Uh, I carry a backup flashlight, a small one, and I'll touch on that. Uh, when I'm in Kodiak, I actually do carry a backup headlamp just in case. Uh, this is the Petzl Tika. It's just a, a headlamp I've had for a lot of years, and, and I'm going to throw that in my backpack this year just to, in case I need a backup headlamp. Um, I also carry uh, a power pack. So this is the Poseidon, the Dark Energy Poseidon uh, power pack. This will charge your phone, uh, I believe, up to three times. The, it depends on your phone, but uh, my phone, it'll charge it up to three times. Uh, which is handy. You can also charge this up on the boat, which is nice. They've got outlets and, and chargers on the boat, so you can charge this up. Keep your phone charged. Um, keep your DeLorme charged. Uh, it's always good to just to have a backup power source. Um, also, I can charge my camera up on this. My camera that I carry with me uh, is a Sony uh, A6000, which is a nice little 
24 megapixel camera takes good images it doesn't weigh too much it's just over a pound uh, it's an 18 by 50 lens uh, it takes good photos quality photos so you know when you're up there on any hunt for that matter you want to take the time to preserve uh, your memories basically take some pictures um, so I always carry a, a good camera with me this is a great little camera uh, for these types of hunts and then finally uh, GPS this has been the GPS that I've carried for a lot of years this is a Garmin eTrex 20X uh, I like this GPS because it's light it's like just maybe five and a half ounces six ounces um, battery life it's got 25 hours of straight battery life uh, it's got basically all the features that I need it to it'll record waypoints tracks I'm going to take a UTM or a point, a GPS point of where he dropped us off so that I can find my way back uh, to that point for pickup in the evening. Like I said last year, we were coming out in the dark, so GPS is a must. Game bags. So I'm going to carry the Carnivore uh, by High Country. Um, great set of game bags. I have two deer tags, so I'll actually take, I'll probably take two sets of these to be honest. Uh, I can take one with me each day and leave the other one on the boat. Uh, it's just nice to have game bags um, when you harvest an animal. This is my possibles pouch uh, or my kill kit. It's got all my survival type of items uh, as well as my knife. And uh, I can kind of show you what's in that. So this is my fire starter kit. I have a lighter. I have some USO uh, waterproof or weatherproof matches. I also have some fire starter cubes here. Uh, these are just the long basically like a paraffin cardboard um, mix that burns for six or seven minutes uh, great little uh, pieces to have in your pack in case you need to start a fire uh, up there in Kodiak there's not a ton of wood but there's plenty of driftwood on the beaches um, there's quite a bit of brush you know there's you could break pieces if you needed to and burn if you had to start a fire wet wipes or toilet paper you always got to have that uh, medical kit so you know you're on a boat with this time we're going to be on the boat with five other guys. Uh, I carry some cold medicine, both daytime and nighttime NyQuil, uh, just in case somebody gets a cold. Uh, I carry some ibuprofen uh, every day. You're going to be climbing, gain a lot of elevation. Kodiak is very steep, so you're going to be starting at sea level and possibly climbing up to you know, 2,000, 2,500 feet. Um, it's very steep. Uh, your muscles are going to be sore from packing animals out. It's a very labor-intensive hunt. So some ibuprofen goes a long ways. So I always have some ibuprofen with me. So I always carry a multi-tool with me, a Leatherman. Uh, this is the Leatherman Signal. Um, doesn't weigh much, it's like seven and a half ounces. It's got some tools that could come in really handy. Of course, you've got the pair of pliers that Leatherman's known for. Uh, it's got a knife sharpener if you need to sh uh, touch up a, or sharpen the edge of a blade. You've got a saw which could come in handy. You've also got uh, a serrated, you know, a blade that's serrated at the bottom uh, in case you need a backup fixed blade knife. Uh, it also has a emergency whistle in case you needed to use that as well as a um, like a flint and steel. So if you needed a spark to start a fire you could, you know, potentially use that. It's got a post peg pounder, a peg pounder, and a little hammer um, which I don't know, may or may not come in handy, but it's always kind of nice to have that option. So, nice little multi-tool for not a ton of weight. You know, for knives, uh, I'm going to carry the uh, Tito 1.1 uh, knife, ultralight knife. Uh, mine's a little bloody still, looks like, from a couple weeks ago. Uh, the nice thing I like about this knife is obviously the weight. You're into it 1.5 ounces. Um, and, you know, it weighs nothing. It cleans up easy. It's a no frills, uh, compact, really light knife. Uh, you can always change out the blades, which is handy. You can always have a sharp blade. Uh, I'm going to carry, you know, 10 blades with me. That's the 60A uh, replacement blades for this knife. Um, I probably won't need that many blades, but with that many tags uh, on the boat and you're hunting in pairs, you're inevitably you're going to end up helping your buddy uh, clean and quarter. Uh, his deer so you know having plenty of blades is a great thing uh, I will also pack another knife a fixed blade knife this is the uh, Taito the Easy Azula um, it's a great little fixed blade knife comes with a kydex sheath uh, just another little fixed blade knife ultra sharp super light um, just a nice little backup knife if you need it I also carry uh, replacement batteries so I'll have a couple of AA batteries uh, for my GPS unit. Uh, this is just for a day. 
in my main bag I'll actually bring some more batteries including triple A's for my headlamps and probably some more double A's for my GPS unit. Uh, this is the, fin the Phoenix E12, uh, one ounce. It's uh, just a backup uh, flashlight in case you need it. A Sharpie. Sharpie, if you need it to write on your tags, if you need to leave a note for somebody or, you know, I don't know, there's a, a bunch of different scenarios that you might need a Sharpie. Uh, around that Sharpie, I always carry uh, some thin um, pieces or wrapped uh, Gorilla Tape, just in case you need the tape to repair some gear. Uh, I also carry some Luco Tape uh, around that, which is uh, it's uh, used in the medical industry for, you know, holding on bandages. This is extremely sticky stuff. Uh, I've had blisters on my heels before from various boots, and this always comes in handy for covering up those hot spots. Uh, I also carry uh, some archery tools in my pack. This is a piece of D-loop cord. It also serves as my rest cord. So if I have, you know, if I run a broadhead across my rest cord and that breaks, uh, I can replace that in the field. Uh, if a D-loop breaks, I can also replace that uh, quickly and easily with some D-loop cord. Uh, I'll also carry an Allen wrench set. Uh, that's for any parts or pieces on my bow, uh, a rest or a sight. Anything that could possibly go wrong, I can fix with uh, an Allen wrench set. Finally, kind of the last thing that I have uh, in this Possibles pouch is I carry some of these MSR Aqua tabs, which are uh, a water treatment tab, tiny little tabs. They weigh next to nothing. I'll probably carry 15 or 20 of these. Um, you know, they don't weigh anything at all. On Kodiak, there's lots of water. Uh, I don't carry a, you know, a water purifier or a filter or anything of that nature. Uh, basically what I will carry for hydration is a couple of these Go Hunt Nalgene bottles, um, which are 32 ounces. I can drop a tab in each one of these and treat water and, and have plenty of water. Tons of water on Kodiak. There's lots of springs and, and creeks and things of that nature. So you never, you know, water's not an issue. A couple other things that I should touch on uh, also in my medical kit are uh, Tylenol PM. So I will take a Tylenol PM one for every day. I can't take two uh, before I go to bed or it completely knocks me out in the morning. I can't function, but if I take one, I sleep really good and I'm fairly with it in the morning. Um, I carry a suture kit in case you needed to, you know, you got a bad cut if you're cleaning an animal and, you know, cut your finger or something like that and it was bad enough, you could actually, you know, suture that up. It's a needle and thread, and I also carry some butterfly bandages, uh, some alcohol or iodine type wipes to clean a wound, um, just some various bandages and things of that nature. I also carry some uh, like Excedrin for you know a headache or a migraine, something like that. I will carry uh, with me some of this Gore-Tex um, Gear Aid repair fabric. This is if you catch a snag in a jacket or you know anything like that, you can use that to cut you a little strip and repair. Um, you know, any kind of holes that you might get in your clothes or your jackets or anything like that. A platypus one liter soft bottle, doesn't weigh anything, just goes in your pack. That way if you need to uh, carry any extra water or anything like that, it just folds up, stuff's in your pack, doesn't weigh anything again. Like I said, it's probably less than an ounce. So I always carry that with me. Black diamond trekking poles. So this is the Alpine Carbon Cork trekking pole. Uh, 17 ounces on this set of trekking poles. Like I said, Kodiak is extremely steep. You're going to be doing a lot of climbing uh, through a lot of vegetation. So uh, I will carry my bow in my left hand, trekking pole in my right hand, uh, just to help me retain my footing. This is a seat pad. This is just a simple foam pad. Pack that with me. It's great for sitting on, keeps your butt dry. Um, also, you know, comfortable if you kill an animal. Uh, it's kind of handy to use to sit down on the ground. You can kneel on that, saves your knees. So I always pack that with me on the outside of my pack. This is a outdoor edge uh, saw. It's basically has a saw blade, it fits down in the uh, handle. It pops out. Uh, I don't carry this with me always. Uh, I do when, you know, like if I'm going right now on this hunt to Kodiak, I'll carry that with me so that I can quickly and easily, uh, you know, cut bone if I need to. It's a little bit heavy for as far as saws go, but I, I do like this little filled saw. So I'll jump over into my bow uh, that I'm going to take with me. Uh, this is a Matthews Halon X. Uh, I love this bow. It's a little bit heavy, but other than that, I completely uh, love the way that it performs and shoots. 
Uh, I'll start with uh, the string cover, the sling. This is the Go Hunt uh, bow sling made by Alpine Innovations. You have to have a string cover in Kodiak. Uh, it's so brushy, there's so much alder, and you know, this is going to preserve your cams. It's going to keep your string from getting damaged. So this is a, a must have for me uh, on this trip. So this is a B Stinger stabilizer setup. This is a 12 inch front bar uh, with three ounces of weight on the end. Uh, this is attached to a 10 degree uh, downturn, um, quick disconnect. So when you put this in your bow case, you can actually pop this off very easily. Just a half turn and your stabilizer pops off. Uh, this is a 10 inch back bar with nine ounces of weight going out the back. Uh, the way this bow is set up for me, it holds extremely well. I don't mind pecking the extra weight. For me, it's worth it. Uh, for a rest, I've been using the Trophy Taker Smackdown Pro Rest. I uh, love this rest. Uh, I also add a, a little arrow holder here on the shelf of the arrow. It's handy just to keep your arrow uh, in place and, until that rest draws and, and comes up at full draw. Um, for a sight, I'm shooting a CBE Tech Hybrid Pro. It's a six inch dovetail sight, uh, five pins, uh, sighted in 20 to 60 yards, uh, as well as the option to, to slide. So I've got a sight tape here set up for this bow. I've got it sighted in out to, oh, what, 120 yards, I guess. Most of your shots on Kodiak are gonna be relatively short. You're talking, you know, 20 to, to 50 yards. It's pretty brushy, so um, you don't get the opportunity to shoot much past 50 uh, on occasion, but not too often. For a quiver, this is the Tight Spot 5 uh, Arrow Quiver. Uh, I like this because it's quick detach. You simply pop that up and it slides off, which is nice. Uh, I actually carry this on my backpack quite a bit, uh, mounted on the side of my pack. I can easily grab an arrow if I need to. Um, I just like the way the bow, bow shoots and holds better without the quiver, uh, but it gives you the option to do either or, which is handy. Uh, for a release, uh, I shoot a True Ball uh, HT Pro release, which is a brass release. It's a back tension or a hinge release. I've been shooting this for about seven years. Um, I haven't shot anything. I haven't shot a trigger release in several years just because I had such a bad case of target panic that I just cannot shoot a trigger release very well. So I, I just committed to shooting a hinge. I've hunted and shot with this for like I said, for quite a few years, I really like this. Uh, I carry a backup release, especially when I go on a destination type of hunt like this. This is the True Ball HT. This is just the regular aluminum version. Uh, it's the exact same setup and configuration as the HT Pro. The only difference is the material. So this is brass, this is aluminum. Uh, the brass, I just like the weight of it. I like the way it feels in my hand. So I like this release, it's my go-to. Uh, I'll pack with me some extra broadheads. So this year I've been shooting the uh, Exodus broadheads. I shoot 100 grains um, on a gold tip uh, arrow. These arrows are the Platinum Pierce arrows. So they're extremely straight, uh, extremely tight tolerances uh, as far as a dozen go. Um, this is three blazer veins. Uh, I think total finished arrow weight on this arrow is about 430 grains. That's my arrow setup. Like I said, I will pack some extra broadheads just in case I need them, uh, as well as some extra arrows. Uh, I'll bring some of those in my bow case. Uh, I'll touch on my bow case. A bow case is a big part, uh, especially if you're flying. Uh, you have to have a bow case that is, or a gun case for that matter, that's lockable. Uh, when I fly to Alaska, uh, my bow will go in here, as well as my sidearm. Um, I'll also probably try to put my bear spray in there. They may or may not allow that. I don't know, we'll have to see. This is a Vanguard bow case. Um, you know, hard-sided. Uh, I took this last year and it, it did really, really well. All right, so I'll jump over into a couple other pieces of, of gear. Um, this is my sleeping bag. This is a Enlightened Equipment Enigma sleeping bag. Uh, it's a quilt uh, in a dry sack. This is an outdoor resource uh, dry sack roll top. Uh, we sell these here in the store in the various um, configurations as far as size goes. You gotta have everything in dry stocks when you go up there just because everything's wet. Um, on the boat, 
Uh, we don't, you don't have to have a pillow. Uh, they provide pillows. And, and they also do have mattresses. It'll sleep four on the boat that, that we were on. Uh, so just a sleeping bag. This, once again, this is the Enlightened uh, Equipment Enigma. It's a 10 degree down quilt. So I'll jump into a uh, clothing system uh, for Kodiak and for, for hunting wet environments, especially late season. Uh, first and foremost, a good set of gaiters is an absolute must. Uh, this is the Kinetrek Mountain Gator. Uh, we sell you know various sizes and colors. We have black and load and green here in the store, but this is a great set of gaiters. It's gonna keep your pant legs dry, gonna keep your uh, socks dry. Um, you know, keep your boots a little bit dry, save them um, from, from just getting completely drenched. Uh, this is a pair of down glassing mittens made by Kuyu. Um, just a great lightweight set of mittens. Uh, they're easy to throw in a pack. They compress down to nothing. And, you know, if you get cold hands when you're glassing, uh, I do. This is a, a lifesaver. Uh, as far as other gloves go, I pack two sets of gloves. It seems like your gloves are always wet. Uh, this is a pair of Outdoor Research gloves. Uh, it's got some light insulation. They are also Gore-Tex, which is handy. Uh, they've got a leather palm, which is nice, give you some grip. Um, so I've packed those uh, last year, and like I said, I rotate gloves out. The other set of gloves that I carry with me, uh, I'll touch on right now, which is a pair of uh, gloves made by Sitka. Uh, the Sitka Cold Front Glove. These have more insulation than the uh, Outdoor Research gloves. So they're relatively warm. Uh, they're also Gore-Tex. Um, so you have that waterproof membrane within these gloves to help keep your hands dry. Okay, for socks, uh, I have been wearing this season and uh, liking, I had great luck with these. It's the uh, Darn Tough 1460 socks. It's a medium weight uh, crew sock. Um, really good luck with these. They wick moisture extremely well. Um, had really, really good luck. I've had no blisters, no issues with these. Uh, I will pack a pair of socks for every day when I go to Kodiak just because, like I said, in a wet environment, it's nice to have some, some warm, uh, clean, dry socks. Uh, beanie, this is just the Sitka beanie. It's just nice, light, weight beanie. Uh, covers your ears, keeps your head warm. Uh, insulation layers. So when you're in Kodiak or any late season hunt for that matter, uh, layering is super important. Uh, this is the uh, down jacket I've been using for a while. Uh, it is down. I probably won't pack this with me or use it every day. This will probably go go with me, but I'll wear it mostly on the boat. Like if we're fishing, there's opportunities to fish for both, you know, halibut and yellow eye. Um, so it's a, a just a nice insulation piece. This is the Black Diamond Cold Forge hoodie. As far as um, things that go in my pack or things that I wear when I'm actually out hunting, uh, like I said, Kodiak's a very wet environment, so I like a uh, synthetic insulation piece. This is the uh, Sitka Kelvin Light Hoodie. So it's a hoodie, synthetic insulation, uh, Prima Loft, relatively warm, uh, layered up with some other items that I'll touch on here in a minute. This is a great piece. I used this last year in Kodiak, had really good luck with it. Uh, mid layer, so this is a I believe, I don't even know if Sitka makes this anymore, but I used to wear it, you know, I still wear it all the time. Uh, the equivalent of it now would be the heavyweight hoodie, the core heavyweight hoodie. Uh, I believe this is the Traverse hoodie, um, but it's just basically a mid-layer fleece uh, hoodie. This here is a Kelvin light down jacket. Uh, I'll also touch on uh, an item that I packed with me last year. This is a, a handy set of pants to have. This is the Kelvin uh, light pant, uh, insulated pair of pants. Once again, synthetic insulation. Uh, rain gear. You got to have good rain gear if you're going to uh, Alaska or any late season hunt for that matter. Uh, this is probably a little bit light, but they do the job. Uh, this is a set of Sitka Dew Point um, rain, rain wear. So this is the jacket as well as the pair of pants. They're about two pounds uh, for those that set. So just a, a quick pair of pants. They zip clear to the hip, so they're easy on and off. This is the Sitka Core Light hoodie. Uh, so just a nice base layer. Lightweight, dries extremely quick. I'll probably take two or three pairs of pants. This is the Sitka Mountain Pant. And also the other pair of pants that I would recommend 
that I used last year and had great luck with is the Sitka Timberline pant. Has waterproof um, reinforced knees as well as a seat panel. So if you're sitting on you know wet ground or vegetation, it keeps your butt dry. Obviously, it's nice to have uh, these reinforced knees that are also waterproof. Uh, when you go to Alaska, especially this hunt. Uh, on Kodiak, it's great to have two pairs of boots. Uh, that's because uh, you're gonna, your boots are going to get wet, so it's nice to be able to dry out one pair and wear one one day and then sub them out for the other pair the next day, and you can just rotate day to day. So this is my selection for boots. Uh, this is the uh, La Sportiva Trango Cube uh, GTX boots. I've been wearing these all year, all summer. Very lightweight. Uh, they're a combination of molded plastic and... Uh, Cordura material, they're extremely lightweight, um, work really, really well for me. I've had no blisters, no hot spots, no issues. Uh, I just replaced, you know, got a backup pair for these. This is the La Sportiva Alp Evo GTX. So a very similar boot as far as the overall platform. Uh, these are full leather where these are, are synthetic. Uh, a little bit heavier, but overall almost the exact same boot. Very comfortable. I've worn these two or three times now with no hot spots, no issues. Um, so those are the two pair of boots that I'll end up bringing. And this is the goal, I guess. So this is my Sitka Blacktail from last year. Uh, you can see the locking tag. When you go to Alaska, you'll have a, a locking tag that goes on each one of your deer. But this is a cool little animal. If you're looking for an opportunity to go on an adventure style hunt and Alaska's kind of been on your radar, uh, a Sitka blacktail is a great uh, species to go after. Uh, you can look forward to an article that I'll do uh, both about my gear list and all, as well as like how to put a, a hunt together like this. It's a whole lot easier than you might think. So uh, look forward to that. Um, you know, when you're going to Alaska and you're hunting Kodiak, like I said, a few things to, to keep in mind when you're going there. Keep your gear dry, so dry sacks, plenty of dry sacks. Um, keep your equipment dry, that's the key if you can. Uh, a couple of pair of boots is great to have to rotate between a good pack, you're gonna have a heavy pack out. Uh, so a good solid pack. Um, you know, a couple other things, good optics is gonna help you obviously. Um, but yeah, stay dry, stay warm, uh, and have a, a fun hunt. Um, bears is something to be aware of, especially when you're on Kodiak. So a sidearm or bear spray or both. Uh, I'm a fan of carrying both. Uh, why not, right? Added protection is never a, a bad thing. Um, but yeah, look forward to uh, putting an article out there for you guys to read. If you have any questions, you can reach me, trail at gohunt.com. And, uh, you know, good luck the rest of your fall. And, and thanks for stopping in and, and checking out my gear list.